The historical landscape of the Victorian goldfield shares an incredible story which spans the centuries. It tells us of the adventurous diggers who swept across Victoria in the early gold rush, the miners on Ballarat who dared to look a little deeper, the enterprising men on Bendigo who exploited the rich reefs, and the huge mining companies that opened up the earth. Every one of them have left marks in the landscape which have endured to this day. In the early 1850s, people followed the newly blazed trails from the towns to the diggings, the way the pastoral pioneers before them had followed the Majors Lion overland. Both made their journeys in hope of a fortunate future. Diggers rushed through the bushland and over the hills, opening up the gullies and picking the shallow ground clean. They dug down and tunnelled in, exploring the earth for riches. Their diggings sprawl along the buried courses of rich ancient riverbeds. A frenzy of hard-working miners sank their shafts in hope that they'd hit bottom on the golden gutter. And many of them did. They washed their pay dirt in creeks, diverted some, and dammed others. They put their wash dirt through puddlers, leaving the imprints of these innovative machines alongside dams and gullies all over the goldfields. Water was an all-important aspect in the recovery of gold, and where there was none, they brought it, strategically digging races which delivered the precious commodity sometimes from miles away. The need to transport water culminated in incredible feats of engineering, such as the Coliban Channel, an ingenious system of open gravity-fed channels which has been delivering water approximately 70 kilometres between Malmesbury and Bendigo since the 1870s. Mining companies put up their poppet heads and put down their shafts. They chased their quartz reefs and deep leads through Victoria's hidden underground, often up against endlessly seeping groundwater, foul air, unstable ground and heavy drifts. But wherever the work was payable, they pressed onward. The enormous heaps of waste rock which were discarded in mountainous lines still remain, their fanned fingers pointing towards the shaft which once delivered miners into the depths of the earth and allowed unfathomable riches to be brought to light. The impressive machines which once lifted ore, pumped water, crushed rock and compressed air are now gone. But many of the foundations that supported them remain, their crooked bolts and crumbled bricks being slowly reclaimed by nature. Boilers lay discarded, empty shells of what were once high-pressure powerhouses, and while most of them have been removed, here and there we can sometimes see the old stone or brick settings which housed them. The cyanide plants which revolutionised gold processing, allowing new riches to be drawn from old tailings, have left their circular footprints in neat little rows across the region. Piles of stone and brick have crumbled into the earth, old chimneys marking the sites of diggers' huts or tents. These were the fireplaces where they cooked their mutton, boiled their tea, dried their clothes and warmed their hands. Each and every one of these fireplaces was a source of comfort in an otherwise uncomfortable mode of living. Entire towns have been and gone, scattered relics and rubble often the only clues left to these places which were once filled with life. The towns which have endured and prospered are lined with grand 19th century architecture. The old gold banks, mechanics institutes and school of mines buildings are a striking reminder of the rich industry which contributed so much to the development of Victoria. Above all else, the old miners have left a legacy which still dazzles the world. We marvel at the thought of those massive gold nuggets which were pried from the earth right here in the Victorian goldfields. And our incredible gold mining heritage is carried forward into the present day in the hearts and hands of our prospectors and miners, with big discoveries still regularly hitting the news. Discoveries which, once upon a time, may have graced the exhibits of London's famed Crystal Palace. You'll find evidence of Victoria's gold mining history all over the place throughout the bushland of the region, and every site has its own part of the story to tell. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the fascinating history of the Victorian goldfields, don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, just hit the like button and share this video.